Perhaps the most useful thing about the backup is the format the backup is in. So now I am actually on my machine that had that shared folder that the backup was stored in, where I just had a share named backup. So this contains the backup from my uh, machine. I have this Windows image backup folder. So that was automatically created when the server backed up to this share. Inside of that, the name of the computer I backed up is actually test dev. So it has the computer name. It has this backup and it's timestamp with the date. Now notice it has three virtual hard drives. Every partition or volume on your server gets created as a different virtual hard drive. So this is a VHDX file is what it actually is. Now let's say you backed up. Then someone comes to you and says, I need to recover a share that was in that backup that's you know since been deleted or some files. We've deleted the files and I want to recover those files. Well, I'm not going to restore an entire server or anything like that. What I can simply do is browse to the backup location, right click and mount. Now this is not really an error message. It says the disk image isn't initialized contains partitions that aren't recognizable, contains volumes that have not been assigned a drive letter. So I'm going to say okay for that. Now I know this is the C drive of my server. Now one way I know that is because it's 57.1 gigs. So that contains all that data. Now what I'm going to do, you can go to disk management or computer management, either one, but I'm going to click on disk management this time. And in disk management, this is the disk. Now, the fact that it says it is, what, 57 gigs is what it actually said. That's because it's a dynamically expanding drive. Here, it shows me the entire drive. That's why it says 464 gigs. That's not you, space. What I'm going to do is change drive letter and path. I'm going to add, and I'm just going to make it the E drive on this system. Now it just opens up. So you'll see I'm under this PC. The E drive now shows up, but I could browse through my users folder. I see all the user profiles. I'll give myself access, but I could go through the desktop. I have the ISO file was actually on the desktop of that server we backed up. So I can click through all the folders and I can see all the content in user profiles, documents. So really, I have a graphical view of everything that was on the C drive of that server. And for that matter, every other drive. So it would be as easy as just right click and copy and you could paste this out to some other location if you truly wanted to recover it. You don't have to go back through the backup utility to actually do that. So very useful. But that's our look at our backups. Now I'm going to disconnect these drives because I don't actually want this drive here. So I'm going to go to my disk one back in disk management, and I'm just going to detach VHD and that will just separate it from the operating system. So now if I go back to this PC, you'll see the E drive uh, does not even show up. So you simply attach or mount, depending on how you do it, depends on what they call it, but attach or mount that assign it a drive letter, copy what you want out of it, then simply detach it. When you detach it, that is really the equivalent of like unplugging a USB drive from your system. You know, the drive's no longer accessible, not connected, drive letter, all that would simply be gone. Pretty user-friendly.